So today I was going to talk about boundaries and um, this is a peculiar one for me because you know in terms of <clears throat> aspects of personal development people often talk about boundaries and you know the need to set boundaries and this that and the other thing <clears throat> but for me personally I found that I've never really resonated with that. I, I think it's probably largely due to the word boundaries. Um, if I think of the word boundary, I just think of an obstacle or a barrier. Uh, so when you think of setting boundaries for personal relationships, then that just seems to me like you're making an obstacle or a barrier between you and another person. And that's always felt to me like, well, then everything else has failed at that point. You know, your relationship has broken down to the point where <clears throat> you now need to create a barrier um, in, order, in order to deal with the situation. And so that never really sat well with me. I, I, I always felt that there must be other aspects to interpersonal relationships that can be worked on so that there isn't a need to set this boundary. You know, there must be a way to to navigate that better anyway so for a long time this word never really you know resonated with me until recently uh, partly due to you know something that I went through uh, in my own life and also something that my wife went through uh, an experience that she went through and the culmination of these basically just gave me this master class into you know the way I see uh, boundaries and, and what that really means you know what it means to me uh, after this whole experience so the way I can explain it um, the way I've seen this is um, so let's take all your virtues as a as a person so maybe you're kind or compassionate or neat or patient or prompt um, so we've got all these virtues, all these qualities that we consider make up a, a good or, you know, useful human being. And at any moment in your life, you're good <clears throat> at some of these things. You're maybe a very neat person or a very kind person or a very empathic person or a very compassionate person. But you're also very bad at others or definitely not as good and and it can often be a blind spot for us because we don't realize this maybe other people indulge us and they don't call us out on it but but there are these aspects um, that we're not very good at and some of them you're just born with them or you it's it's kind of part of your nature if you like you know you you see a child from a young age and, and they're always kind you know they're always kind they're nice to animals you know they're always kind and then you see other children who are very neat you know, they're, they're, they're just naturally very neat and they keep their environment very tidy. Um, whereas others are just, you know, chaos uh, and, 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 and don't like to be tidy. So, so there's some that you're given, you know, as a starting point. You know, we all know those people who are laid back. They're just naturally laid back people. They always are or authentic people. And it's just the way they've always been. Um, so yeah so those are your your gifts so to speak and then there's others that we work on in life to various degrees of success and some of them we master during the course of our lives sometimes sooner sometimes later and then there's those that we'll never master you know um our achilles heels you know we just never quite get to the bottom of them and and we work hard but but you know there, there might be a work in progress all the way through and so so you've got your landscape of virtue and so does everyone else and these are very very seldom overlap you know so what you're good at is not necessarily what someone else is good at and so knowing that it means that if you're a very prompt person or a very neat person then every time you're exposed to somebody who is not prompt and not neat that's going to be a trigger for you and there's you know as far as these things go, anytime something triggers you, I would say the best thing that you can do is go inside and try and figure out what that trigger is. Um, and any kind of personal development is going to be around, if, if I was to sum up personal development in one sentence, it would be sitting in discomfort. It is literally taking the things that we find hard and sitting in them until we don't find them hard anymore, mastering them. Uh, that's the only way um, to really 
get to peace is to is to sit with that discomfort and master these things that are challenging to us so to an extent if if you're someone who's very neat and you know and every time someone's untidy it triggers you um, it would be it would be a great exercise for you to sit in that untidiness and to try and find peace within that. It doesn't need to change the fact that you're a neat person. It just means that untidiness is no longer something that triggers you and has a hold over you. Because if you imagine that everything that wasn't as good as as you are at something like if someone's unkind and you're kind or someone's late and you're and you're punctual, if every single one of those things triggers you and makes you, you know, uh, sends you sends you off, then as you improve as a person, as you get better at all of these things, so the whole world's just going to trigger you. You're just going to be miserable all the time because nobody's going to be able to live up to the expectations that you've set by your standards. So that would be a horrible place to live in. So as we improve on these things, it's really important that we sit in the discomfort of not achieving those things otherwise what will happen is that your life will become about fear and control so you'll you'll create an environment for yourself where all of these things fit together and as soon as it starts to deviate from that you're going to try and take control of the environment and you're going to exhibit fear that the environment is going to go outside of your comfort zone and that's horrible and the more of those there are the more of a prison you create for yourself so that's really not good you should be comfortable within all the things that you don't necessarily agree with or, or that you've that are not up to your standards or up to your virtues so where do boundaries come in so a boundary <clears throat> let's assume you've kind of done all that work now and you're a patient person and people who are impatient was a trigger for you but you've now come to find peace in that and you can be around someone who's impatient without it triggering you and without it upsetting your balance so you've done the work now a boundary is a contract or a negotiation that you can enter into or some terms and conditions of engagement to make sure that you're comfortable so it's not about an ultimatum it's not saying to somebody do this again and you know there'll be a consequence because I think a lot of people see boundaries in that way they see it as this kind of ultimatum it mustn't be that it must rather be a contract that you enter into upfront you know very very transparent you know and very clear to the other person so if you're somebody who's you know very punctual and you always arrive on time for things and someone else is very late upfront you can say I'm going to be there at 10 and I'll have to leave by 11 at by 10:15. Um I can only wait until 10:15. And if you make this contract up front and if you've adapted, you you're not triggered by it anymore, then you can make it from a place of peace and kindness. It's simply the terms that you're setting for the engagement. And this stems into all the aspects of our relationships. You know, um and, and so it's really just this contract or this agreement that you set for the terms of the relationship so that it's clear to the other person what the parameters are. And there's no conflict. The conflict only happens if you don't say anything about it and you don't set the terms up front. Because then what happens is that when somebody doesn't do, like, you know, everyone said these words once upon a time. I can't imagine how someone can do that or I can't believe someone could be that way. I mean, haven't we all said that? I can't see how that person can be that way because that's something that we've mastered and they haven't. So we expect them to behave the way that we would in any situation. We often do that. Uh, we expect the other person to behave the way that we would, that people aren't going to. So setting the terms up front means that the situation is going to go according to, as far as you're concerned, according to what you're prepared to accept in that situation. And you just set that up front. Because if you don't, then that person's going to behave in a certain way. And you're going to feel a feeling of resentment for that person. Why don't they get it? Why can't they be more kind or more patient? I don't know why people can't just be nicer. Um, or neater, you know, why can't you tidy up after yourself? So if you don't set the terms up front, then there's going to be resentment. And as soon as you try and set a boundary from a place of resentment, it becomes a consequence or an ultimatum. 
and then you're in a conflict situation. And you don't really want to be in a conflict situation because it doesn't motivate the other person to change. It only mo motivates them to defend themselves. So rather than waiting until that point, and don't respond at that point, rather go inward at that point, work on what you need to work on, make peace with that situation. And then as you approach that same situation the next time, from a place of kindness and compassion, just set the terms, set the contract up front. These are the terms, this is my boundary. And I, I still don't like the word boundary, but I do like the word terms of engagement. These are the terms of engagement for me in this situation. And that will allow you to be comfortable and hopefully to avoid the conflict that can come from not setting those terms up front. I hope this is helpful.